Hi everyone, I'm Vicki at Creative Notions and today I want to do the video on the chenille diamond quilt that came out in the December subscription box for Creative Notions. In that box um, we have these fat quarters, seven, fat, eight fat quarters, and then enough chenille it to go around this outside edge four times. Um, also, there's an alternate pattern here for the chenille to go across the diamond blocks in the center. And so you will need an additional 3 8 inch chenille to do this one down here. And so I want to, to get started on this video and just show you how to make these blocks and put it together. But I wanted to tell you too that I also I had a such a nice time visiting with Nanette, who is the lady who makes chenille. She's the one who invented it and came up with the idea. And just she is just a delightful lady. And there is so much that you could do with chenille. I want to make chenille on everything that I make now. Um, I have made a few things that I'm going to show you. And I've learned a few things that maybe will help you not do some of the things that I did. And um, I'll try and give you some tips and tricks along the way. And please stay tuned. I've gone ahead and cut my squares out. I, I will put in a picture of how I cut mine. You can cut your blocks at nine inches. The block will be cut down later. And um, I'm going to be using some yellow thread and a yellow bobbin to go when I put the chenille it on and I'll talk more about that later. You'll need a rotary cutter and a ruler. And I'm going to be using my Martelli mat because it's easier to square up blocks and not take the chance of cutting yourself. And then I have a little Creative Grids ruler that helps me mark my center line which is what I'm going to do to be able to make half square triangles. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a pencil or some other marker to just, you know, mark the center lines and then down both sides. So I will be stitching a quarter of an inch down both sides. And you can kind of see it, it's pretty, pretty uh, faint but that's kind of how we like it when we're working on our own things. And I've divided my blocks up into darks and lights right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my blocks sewn and then we'll talk about squaring them up. You're going to need to match up two lights because we don't have quite enough darks. So pick something with some contrast in it um, and then use this as the dark or use one as the dark and one as the light. Martelli unit has a pressing mat as well that you can put on top of the cutting mat or take it off and just use the pressing mat.
Now it's time for us to square up our blocks. I like to use a square ruler because it makes it easier for me. There's a diagonal line down the center and then we want eight inch blocks. So I'm gonna put some tape right here so it'll be easy for us to tell. This is the kind of tape I'm going to use. It's very thin, but you can, and you can see through it. So I'm gonna turn my ruler over and just below the eight inch mark, or at the eight inch mark, I'm going to just place this tape. It comes off really easy. Okay, so on the other side of the eight inch square, or the square up ruler, you can just mark the other side as well. And then when you're through with it, you can pull it off, not a problem. And see, then you can see where it's supposed to go. Lay the diagonal on the stitch line and then turn your rotary cutter or turn your mat as you go and cut along two sides at a time. You will, as you can see on this, the pink line still has some fabric underneath it. So cut the right side and then the top and then reposition your ruler, flip it around. Make sure that that diagonal line is on the seam line and then mark, put the marks or the little pink lines down right on the edge and then go ahead and cut again the right side and then again the right side. And if you do that, your blocks are going to be perfect. I don't know what happened to the next clip, but I laid my blocks out on a flannel board and then sewed them together two at a time. Then I sewed the four blocks together and the, four, the next four blocks together, then the next two, and put them together in rows. Look at your pattern for the layout and the diagram and you can play with your blocks and change the layout any way that you'd like. Now that it's sewn together, it's time to quilt it. You can use your sewing machine and quilt down the diagonal lines uh, practice your free motion quilting or whatever you want. Layer it with your batting and your backing and pin it or use spray baste and have fun. This is two layers of chenillet on the front and two, two layers of chenillet on the back. And look how nice it looks. And I'll show you just how to do that to make it look like one continuous piece. It is a little bit tricky but not hard at all so you will see and this is the 3 8 inch chenille it right here and it's just one piece and it fuzzed up so nice I went ahead and used my long arm because all I have right now is some poly cotton batting which is a the combination batting and it has to be quilted about every three inches for it to work well. I was out of just the polyester, which would have been really cute for this baby quilt, but it needed more quilting than I really wanted to do on the machine at this time, the, this machine at this time. So I went ahead and quilted that, and then I've just cut off my edge like this. And now I just wanna show you um, how to put this chenille it on the 5 8 inch chenille is what we're going to put around the outside and that's what was in your your box this time and you're going to need four pieces for each side now it's okay if it has this um bias thing here that's not a problem it can go on the top or the bottom and you don't have to have a continuous piece you can have pieces and it will be just fine because when it frays, it'll all fray pretty evenly. So what I found when doing, I didn't actually serge this edge, so I think I'll just go ahead and do a zigzag. And when I do a zigzag, I want, I want the zigzag to be pretty close and I wanna use the same color thread. 
I tried it with white thread and it and on the pieces of chenille that I didn't have um, covering the edge very well, it did show the white edge. So I'm just going to set my machine and go ahead and do a zigzag stitch. If you have a serger, you could certainly go around the edges with your serger, but like I said, it might be best to use yellow thread. Well, let's see. Okay, maybe I want that a little wider. And a little closer together. So I'll go ahead and do this and meet right back here. I've got two layers of the chenille now and I'm going to put it on the bottom first. Now Nat recommended that you sew one side on first and then you like do the bottom first and then do the top. And try to leave an eighth to a quarter of an inch off the side, but the more you leave hanging off the side, the better coverage you're going to get that will cover up this seam. So I'll show you what that looks like. And don't worry if you have to stop and add some more. It you can um, you can piece it. You can use all kinds of little pieces if you need to. It won't bother the chenille it at all. And this is what it looks like on the back. So it should fray up really nice. And that's about how much I'm leaving on the edge on the front. Just make sure that when you catch this seam right here, or the zigzag or the searched edge, make sure you catch it really good when with your straight seam, straight stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and do the outside and then we'll do the top, put the chenille on the top. It didn't take long at all to go all the way around the outside on the underneath the quilt. So now we'll start over and just put match the edges if you can it's not you know you can do the best you can it's not rocket science and then just go ahead and start sewing this down the only time I ran into trouble really was when I tried to do all four at once because there's times you're going to as you can see I'm probably right off the side of the quilt itself, um, but I know it's attached to the back. So kind of check yourself and make sure that you're um, lined up. And if you have pieces, like this is what I'm using today. It's a mess, but it works. It's still the same stuff. So if I have to, I just cut some off if I can't find the end, I just cut it off and use it however I can. I'm going to just join this right here, so I'll lay it right on top. And then I'll show you what I do when I get to the corner. You can just twist this and it will be just fine. It'll still fray nicely. Twist it to make the curve and then turn your machine and it will be just fine to do that. And you can do that when you follow letters or any kind of decorative place that you wanna put it. Chenille it is just really an amazing product. The chenille it's all the way around, there's four layers of it. Now we'll get the skinny 3 8 inch and put it on all of the diamonds. You only need one. Two would be okay, but one works just fine. So you can do it in pieces and just cut it or you can start and just start sewing. Um, you can do it however you want. Use the same color thread and just start sewing right down the middle of it and clip it off, use pieces if you have to. And then when you get all finished, then 
pants. Pop it in the washer and the dryer with a shoe or some towels, light colored towels or something like that. And that will help the chenille to bloom. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making the diamonds with the chenille and then I'll show you when it's all done. This is what it looks like with the chenille it sewn on before it's washed. And the nice thing about it is if you're, oh, I missed a spot right there. Better fix that. It, the nice thing about it is that if your intersections don't meet, nobody is gonna ever know. All right, one more spot and then it's off to the wash. This is another project that I made with the chenille it, and I put it all along the edges and on meow. If you do raw edge applique at all, it would be fun to put chenille on it, but I do want to show you something. I missed right here, I missed catching the edge of it with the chenille it. So all I need to do is go back over that and put another little piece of chenille it and just sew it on and then fluff it up with a brush and it will be perfect. This is something that I made that I wanna give as a gift and I used chenille it on it, but look, I didn't get it close enough to the edge. So I wanna show you a trick that embroiderers use when sometimes they're bobbin thread doesn't come up. So I have a Sharpie. Let me see where it is there. And I'm just going to color that white thread and look. You'll never know that that happened. So if that happens to you, and your chenille it maybe didn't quite get all the way to the edge, get yourself a Sharpie in the right color and color a little bit. Pretty good, huh? I think it's passable. Anyway, that's a trick from me to you. I thought you might appreciate if it doesn't come out quite the way you wanted it to. Here is the finished quilt. Doesn't it look so cute with the chenille it all the way around? I'll get closer and show you what it looks like. That's with a 3 8 And this is what the edge looks like. And look at the back, how soft and cuddly. When I got it out of the dryer, I just wanted to hold it and cuddle it because it's so soft. We do have the minky backing in blue, pink, and yellow available, and it's the same minky that the permates were made out of. I can't wait to see what you make with yours and what designs you come up with and what colors you decide to use. Be sure and tell us everything about it and if you enjoyed the project and if you are going to use your chenille it a different way let us know i promised a giveaway if you made it all the way to the end of the video 
Um, what I'd like to give away today is an, a fat quarter bundle of eight fat quarters called New Friends from Wilmington Prints. Um, I'll also give you the pattern to this quilt that's just cute and cuddly and two packages of chenille it, one five eighths and one three eighths. So like, subscribe and leave me a comment and I will use a random generator and choose a winner in a week. Hey. 